DG or Dan, thank you for jumping in. Happy Um, to. yeah, yeah. I, I'm curious as uh, by means of an opening question, what Yeah. it is about comics that makes it a special way of storytelling for you. That's a really great question. And, you know, for me, uh, that's that's a, an unusual take on it, too. But I'll I'll look at it from from where I got involved in comics, which was as a kid, you know, and then as you start to think about it more, maybe intellectually, you know, is, is where it goes. But I mean, for for me, I was just initially just captivated by that sense of rhythm, I think, you know, these visual panels. in arranged in different ways um in a, in a way that um led you into visual storytelling that was then expanded by the words that were there as well and non-intellectually you know not thinking about it then but maybe thinking about it more as i got into creating it and then more as i've continued to think about it as an adult it, it's that when it's done right it's that kind of amazing rhythm you know, of how those different panels can create and expand, you know, space and and pull you in or push you out. That is re really unusual. There's nothing else like it. You know, very often in the vernacular of comics, even in creating them, as I've done, we, we default to the language of movies, right? You know, we say close up and medium long shot and, you know, over the shoulder shot and so forth. But Even if you do that, even if you capture that, you know, within the panel structure, uh, the effect is extraordinarily different than watching a film, right? And being engaged in the film, the film, you know, takes you in, it combines, um, you know, pacing and music, but you can't rewind it, right? A comic, you move through and you're at the, at the uh, mercy <laughs> or, or seduced by, you know, the power of the artist and to a lesser degree, until you start to lean in the writer, you know, to uh, follow along, but also you have at any point in time, the ability to activate a nonlinear sense, right? You can decide, I want to go back and I want to look at that again. I want to experience that moment again without having to hit the rewind button, or I want to spend more time on that uh, exciting moment or that emotional moment in a way which, um, you know, okay, I can go back and I can reread the line in a book or I could flip ahead in a book and I can do those things, a, a regular book, a prose book, you mm -hmm. know, for example. But the effect that comics makes in that way to me as a reader and even as a creator, I mean, other people have broken this down. Obviously, Scott McCloud, you know, his classic understanding comics really, mm -hmm. to my mind, you know, delineated so many of the things about the structural elements of comics and art styles and such. But I think uh, sensually, experientially, you know, to me, that's always been the factors that make it so different and powerful and enjoyable. Mm -hmm. And unusually, you know, there's some people who can't read it, right? <laughs> a couple of weekends ago, I was with a folks and I was handing over some stuff I had seen that I was quite taken with. And they just didn't know how to read it. You know, they couldn't, it wasn't their thing. So like following the page, where am I supposed to go next? And it wasn't a bad page. It wasn't a mess. But um, I don't think some people are wired, you know, to want to enjoy it in, in the same way. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's interesting that you mention understanding comics because I had a student today just pick that up off of my shelf. We were doing some Uh huh. choice reading time and he picked that up and I said, oh, that's a heavy read. And he kind of went like this and he was like, well, it doesn't feel that heavy. Like, just, just, <laughs> just dig in, just dig in for right, a little while. Right, right, yeah. right, right. Um, so the, from that question about kind of the, the general... landscape of storytelling i'm curious about the particular stories that you're drawn to because you often write characters and explore characters um or craft characters with edge i should say Mm-hmm. um Mm-hmm. so wolverine being one of those daredevil being one of those so curious about what it is uh, for those characters that are sort of on the fringes that draws your attention Sure. And I only have done Wolverine, you know, a, a, a fair few times, although it's always been enjoyable to do. Uh, mm -hmm. Certainly much better known and spent a lot longer um, on Daredevil and even doing a new Daredevil miniseries now, which is kind of exciting. Um, uh, uh, you know, it, somebody pointed out to me recently, which I didn't think about before, it was another podcast, and they were looking at my old sort of lineup of things. 
And they said, in one month, I wrote a, a deeply deranged horror story, a daredevil story, um, a, uh, a and and a and a five goes west kids book, you know. So <laughs> you have range. <laughs> so yeah, you know, and I think there was a science fiction thing in there too. So it, I don't know if it's always <clears throat> being drawn to characters with an edge. It's although certainly I've done those and I enjoy those a lot. But I think you always have to find the flow of the character. You know, mm. By that I mean, you, you know, the character on the edge ultimately is about something that we can all relate to so why is that character on the edge and you have to then bring the reader there or you have to bring the character back from the edge you know to to enjoy it more i think there's a visceral um excitement because i've been a fan of adventure films and and thrillers and in the old days dirty harry type things and tough guy sort of uh escapades um you know, I I leaned into that, and I think when I began, I had um, a tendency to lean into those maybe in a more uh, superficial way, trying to emulate certain things. You know, I'm, I'm gonna mm -hmm. I'm gonna try to be like this, and sometimes I was successful, um, and sometimes I was um, forcing words <laughs> yeah. into characters' mouths uh, and situations to try to achieve that effect. Um, but I think that and right now as an example in doing this newer daredevil story i'm 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 enjoying that that edge of the seat sort of effect that i'm trying to create and hopefully i'm creating but but um pursuing it in a way that i'm letting the characters really kind of take me along mm -hmm. um and i think putting characters in those sort of situations um is exciting if i'm exciting myself right in that sort of adventure thriller sort of way um that is uh, what's drawing me to it and yeah. because i like those type of stories i'm doing a kickstarter story now which is ostensibly a supernatural thriller which it is but again it's as much an adventure story as it is anything like that so i think my being drawn to them is just simply what am i responding to mm -hmm. um you know they always say write what you know i think if you only wrote what you kn you knew you'd have a very limited range. <laughs> right, right. You know, I can't, I can't write about vampires. I've never been a vampire. I can't write <laughs> about a blind lawyer. I've never been a blind lawyer. Um, but I think, you know, equally important is, is write what you enjoy, right? Write yeah. the things that you are into and you want to be thrilled by. And, and then finding your way of doing that is, uh, is equally important. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And, uh, yeah, I've, I've never been a vampire either, but I, I certainly enjoy the stories. <laughs> um, so curious, I, I was going to mention briefly and then circle back to daredevil, what it was like to work on milestone, because I remember milestone as being sort of a, I would read anything that was a comic as a kid after a certain yeah. point. Um, and I remember milestone was sort of at the fringes where I could find it. Um, and curious what that was like on the the creative side for you. Um, amazing. I mean, amazing yeah. people to work with. Um, I, 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 and this is a joke, keep this in the thing, but I'm going to say this right now. You know, I personally am responsible directly for Milestone's existence because um, I got Greg Wright into comics mm -hmm. and Greg Wright got Dwayne McDuffie into comics. So into Marvel. So if, if Dwayne had not come in to Marvel, there probably would not have been a milestone right um but mm -hmm. <laughs> um but um yeah i knew duane from college uh through my good friend greg wright um i was friends with duane um and just recognizing and being able to uh see that talent early on you know fierce talent and intelligent talent um and then seeing what they were creating with uh, milestone which um was both groundbreaking in terms of race and culture but also in in depth of thinking you mm -hmm. know i wish i still had i um my copy of it you know but there was the 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 milestone bible or whatever they called it you know which kind of basically mapped out you know all of dakota city it mapped out all the characters in not excruciating detail in wonderful detail like it was this rich kind of guidebook you know this atlas obscura of a of a world where you could like know oh that tunnel leads there and those roads lead there and that neighborhood's about this and you know the richness of even just reading that um gave you ideas gave me ideas so i felt 
you know, very privileged to be invited in to play in that in that sandbox, even for a short time. You know, the, there was a long, hot summer uh, mini series, which was, um, uh, you, you know, about a, the set of characters. And then there was the run on hardware toward the end of hardware, which we didn't realize was the end of it. And um, and I just reread that recently. And um, uh, somebody had brought that up on a podcast and said, you want to talk about this? And I had not reread that in forever. I, I famously never read the stuff after I wrote it because I was always scared to kind of go back and say, oh, my God, what if it's really as awful as I think it is? So I'd write it and then move on to the next thing. But going back and rereading it, I was struck with kind of what you had said in an earlier thing. It was, a, it was an edgy character, a unique character. And I just was saying, man, this this action is moving. These lines are landing uh, you know, the, the beats are all kind of there. There's some mm -hmm. really clever original stuff. And I, I wrote to Joe Illich, who was the, um, on Facebook, who was the editor. And uh, I said, man, thank you so much for, for guiding me, <laughs> you know, in this, this is, this, this is great. This is like a lot of fun to read. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and then sort of say in the second line, oh, wait a minute, I wrote this. Right, so right. it was that great effect of it. So, just fabulously talented people to be um, involved with. And to me, a real um, privilege to be invited because, uh, you know, I think they had the pick of whoever they wanted to work with them. Uh, so to have Dwayne, uh, you know, ask if I want to come in and, and play in that sandbox as he did, uh, even though we knew each other, I, 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 I never felt that it was a, a nepotism sort of thing. You know, we mm -hmm. knew each other, but it was because we respected each other's talent that I would bring him in on certain things. And I believe why he brought me in uh, at Milestone. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And the, I mean, those books just stand up. Uh, oh, yeah. Over time, they really do. They really oh, do. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm really, I'm really uh, rooting for, um, you know, more of what they're doing now with this bringing the 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 pieces back i mean yeah. extraordinary characters and extraordinary thinking and uh and um it, you know they deserve their their time and their time to stand on their own absolutely. again absolutely so i know that you can't give away plot details nor would i even ask because marvel ninjas would descend from the ceiling uh the the hand would like close on us um but curious in general about what it's been like to return to the world of daredevil for the upcoming uh series that you've mentioned yeah uh wow um <laughs> and this is a uh, called daredevil black armor which is coming mm -hmm. out uh november 22nd uh and then and it looks great issues. it looks it, great thank you it does <laughs> and netho diaz is the artist and mm -hmm. And is just, uh, you know, I would not worked with him before. I was not familiar with his work before. And I just give him extraordinary credit for uh, quickly making this character his own in the story. Uh, and not only being a very dynamic storyteller, you know, as we've discussed, he's like, I'm here to make the stuff look cool. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> which he is, but he's also uh, doing just great storytelling choices. You know, the way he's laying out the panels, the way he's, He's moving from my plot to um, then delivering uh, what's the balance of those panels again that we talked about before. Mm -hmm. It's it's in some cases, you know, he's he's actually adding more things uh, to a page to uh, uh, get to the right moments. And it all just feels like, wow, this is this is exactly what it should be. So, um, you know, it, it was and, and is just a. a, a I actually sent a note to C.B. Sobolski uh, the other night because um, I saw the 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 full finished first issue, you know, at the beginning of this week, um, and uh, and and C.B. Sobolski, who had come up to me at uh, Terrificon, a, a convention in in Connecticut last summer, not this last summer, but the summer before, and introduced himself, and then, you know, he had said, "Would you ever be interested in coming back and doing, you know, something? We're doing these kind of short run things." Mm -hmm. um and um uh, and i didn't think too much of it at the time you know this nice guy chatting me up but is this going to become something uh but i said to him in this note uh you know thank you i hope you're liking what you're seeing but uh it occurred to me i just said this has really just been a gift mm -hmm. and because when i when i left the book it was it was sort of under in 
elegant circumstances. <laughs> mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> I was there had been an editorial shift. Um, I moved to a different office. I was essentially, and you know, of course, Marvel. It's their characters. It's, they decide the teams. Uh, you, you know, uh, so they could remove the team at any time. Um, even though I'd been on the book for a while, but it was a very inelegant way that it was handled. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was, um, uh, I was, I was left sort of flat-footed, as it were. Okay, right. you know, like right. I'm in the middle of a storyline. I'm in the middle of things I'm trying to accomplish. But I guess that's it. Okay, I'm done. I had my day in the red suit and hanging out on hell's kitchen rooftops mm -hmm. um and i didn't look back over my shoulder right there wasn't 20 odd years of woe is me and geez i wish i was still writing daredevil it's like now and again i check in on him and sometimes i'd say okay sometimes i'd say wow that's really great stuff but i mean, i'd watch the netflix show and got a big thrill out of that um but to kind of come back in on this uh now in this unusual circumstance especially with them saying, hey, we want to use that costume, right? Because it's using this <laughs> sort of tough guy, you know, black armor costume that we had introduced for the storyline back in the day that had kind of gotten a little or a lot of grief back then. A lot of people didn't like the costume. <laughs> um, you know, they said, how could you change the classic costume? How dare you? Um, but I guess over time, it's kind of gotten its fan base. You know, folks, yeah, yeah. you know, have sort of, either played with the toy or or just had their own uh warm spot for it and that's grown to have some heat so um you know to introduce the idea we don't want you to just do a story we want you to do a story in that sort of time period with that costume mm -hmm. was challenging and also really interesting right because now i can step back into it and and not finish incomplete things like there's, I'm not, you know, there's little bits and pieces I'm picking up on, but I'm not sort of saying, oh, it's a sequel to this, but it's a chance, I think, to really, and and I don't know if I'll ever do another one. If they ask, you know, I'd probably say yes, but it's a chance to kind of end my run mm -hmm. in a more elegant way, right? In a way that feels very satisfying. Like this story is, is a, is a, I think a really fun powerful hit the moments adventure uh with a very very strong visual talent you know doing it mm -hmm, who's mm -hmm. totally into the vibe that we're doing which is sort of capturing this 90s energy and one-liners and <laughs> <laughs> and you know matt murdoch suffering and that means other people are going to suffer <laughs> when he gets his footing yeah. and that sort of thing um it's it's really just been been a, a great experience. You know, we've had a couple of things along the way where oh, we got to change the page count, so you got to cut a whole issue out, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> or you got a you got a character that we thought was going to be central to the story, and then another office said we can't really use him, so you got to rethink that totally. Um, okay, mm -hmm. but those are things that you weather, right? Mm -hmm. And they were presented as. They, you know, they were presented as let's solve this together, right? So the notes back from editorial have been, I think, positive to make the story better. Um, and uh, and and as I said, being teamed up with new people who are really over delivering and surprising me with what's going on. Uh, you know, I get these pages in, and I can't wait to to script them. So yeah. uh, for me, it's it's been very charged up, and I'm looking forward to kind of you know, the next week or so, really, I've got some ideas to really kind of crank up the the promotion of the book, as it were, uh, from my point of view, and make it, uh, uh, you know, more, even more high profile for folks uh, looking, looking for it. Yeah, yeah, well, I'm looking forward to it. And been a fan of the costume change um, since the first time Great. I saw it. Yeah. And, and looking forward to hopefully seeing seeing your name on more issues of Daredevil to come. Um by means of a, a final for the show question and you can of sure. course throw in anything that we might have missed but just curious about any final shout outs to collaborators positive experiences um some of those kind of things to close out yeah um another great question i have been um blessed 
you know, and, and extraordinarily lucky and, um, with the people I've worked with, I've worked with people sort of well above my pay grade (laughs) and, and talent base, you know, I think in some ways, which have, which have made me step up. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, right from the early days, I was working with, uh, Klaus Jansen, Dennis Cowan, Bill Sienkiewicz. Um, Mm -hmm. you know, these were people who I, knew his names right and in credit boxes and uh and suddenly i was partnered with them you know somehow i wasn't i wasn't starting with a nobody like myself (laughs) i was starting pretty quickly in with uh very established names and uh you know so those three right there you know just um uh, powerful collaborators and partners and people who when you write something and then you see what they do with it. And then you're saying, oh, my God, they they just kind of opened this up in such an amazing way. Mm-hmm. It, to me, gives me the responsibility to then make sure that I'm doing a story, whether it's a plot and then the script, you know, the, the you know, writing, writing in that kind of sequence sequence um, to to really just you know, don't cover up the artwork, <laughs> make sure you're <laughs> writing, writing things that are that are on um, you know, just, just at that high level, mm-hmm. um, you know, on, on daredevil, you know, I I've had um, especially, you know, powerful collaborators, you know, Lee weeks who I first teamed up with on it. And we both, I would say to a certain extent, didn't know what we were doing, but we didn't know what we were doing together, which mm-hmm. was like, <laughs> by that I meant, you know, because we didn't know what we were doing, we were willing to take risks, right. Mm-hmm. We were willing to sort of push, harder and push each other um you know toward that seminal sort of 300th issue uh which was just a kind of a white heat of like you know we felt like we were just getting better and better and better because we were getting better with each other right there was a great kind of loop you know of that and and in a similar fashion scott mcdaniel who would take over from daredevil uh you know maybe half a dozen issues after um lee had left uh, and then would later go through a kind of extraordinary art change uh, mm-hmm. when we started this fall from grace story. You know, he had a certain style, um, you know, for maybe maybe a year, year and a half. But he had been thinking about changing how he approached his artwork. And we used this big storyline as a way to do it, which was great to be part of. Right. Mm-hmm. It was great to sort of then see um, that transformation with somebody who was doing that kind of work. And then again, felt that, 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 uh, that energy, that slick cyclical energy uh, from working with somebody, you know, like that to the point where I, I didn't, Scott always surprised me. You know, I didn't know exactly what he was going to, going to draw, mm-hmm. but I knew whatever he was going to draw was going to be right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if that makes sense. Like I, I, I felt it was going to be what I was putting down and he was going to find a way to make it make it be right on um so those are you know some of the folks who um you know stand out uh you know right off uh, for me you know ron garney was also another one who was just a a a powerful beast of an artist early on um on night stalkers he worked a little bit with me on daredevil and then we did a, a horror book called night stalkers uh, and of course, Ron has gone on to do Berserker, which is, I don't know, something like the best-selling comic of all time at this point, or yeah, something. I don't yeah. know. But um, uh, but even then, you know, he was just a, uh, you know, just a very, very powerful uh, force of of art. Um, so when I say, you know, I've been really lucky to to work with, uh, you know, these type of folks, um, I I have been. And so, uh, you know, I give I give them credit for um, because comics are, you know, writing is important, but if they're a visually led um, medium mm-hmm. and uh, and so you get teamed up with a, a great artist, uh, it helps you not only stand out as a writer, but I truly believe it helps you, you become a better writer because you are if you're smart and I hope I am you're elevating your game for that reason. I got to mm-hmm. keep up with this guy I, or, or, or woman or, you know, or I have to, 
I have a responsibility to do the best possible work for them. Yeah. Which I've always, I've always felt is, is important. And I've always tried to do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, uh, Again, I'll just echo what I said earlier about Milestone, but about all of your work, it stands up and uh, the the craft that you bring definitely stands up over time and Thank you. looking forward to the continued storytelling to come as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Really appreciate that, Jason. I appreciate the chance to uh, to chat with you today. Yeah, absolutely. Did we miss anything in the talk through that you want to make sure to, um, to mention or know, shout out? Just a couple of shout outs, if you don't mind, at the end, sure, you know, sure. I have a, I have a newsletter, uh, which I'm inconsistent with, but I, I would like to be consistent would like people to check it out, which is at uh, storymaze.substack.com. And uh, if you're planning on running this in the next uh, month, mm -hmm. the next 28 days, uh, I have a Kickstarter, uh, as I mentioned, for this supernatural comic called Axel's Infernal, which uh, can be found on Kickstarter or also at bit.ly bit.ly slash axles infernal uh, so if folks want to check that out maybe it's something they want to uh, share and maybe support sounds wonderful sounds wonderful looking forward to it and we'll make sure to drop this in time thank you thank you thank you so much i hope you have a, a good evening you do the same dan thank you so much all right sir take it easy be well you too. bye bye